President, colleagues, Alan Crosby, President of the EIS, moving Composite 14. I'm sure I don't need to remind anyone here of the heroic and selfless work that all of us in the public sector put in during the pandemic. But the fact is that COVID hasn't gone away and its effects on staff in all education center, sectors is of real concern. We are second only to our comrades in the health service when it comes to the risks of contracting COVID within the workplace. And in 2023, the World Health Organization announced that one in 10 COVID infections results in symptoms of long COVID, suggesting that hundreds of millions of people will need long-term care at huge cost to health services across the globe. Far too many of them will be teachers. But we already know that this is preventable because studies have repeatedly shown that cleaning the air can significantly reduce COVID outbreaks in schools. This is why we're calling on the TUC to campaign for HEPA filters to be fitted in every indoor learning space and we're grateful to our NEU comrades for their improving amendment. The expense of committing to this is nothing compared to the expense of not committing to it. It's a classic case of preventative spending. Poorly maintained buildings and significant equipment also pose a significant risk to those working in schools. Many school buildings are at or past their intended service life and require substantial investment to bring them up to standard. The presence of asbestos remains a serious issue in many school buildings and one which requires to be managed with extreme care. Recently, the risks associated with reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete or rack hit the headlines with schools across the UK potentially at risk of rack collapse. Colleagues, as I move on now to some of the wider health and safety issues raised by this composite, let me start by saying that it is deeply disturbing that many of the rioters we saw recently on city streets across England and Northern Ireland were school-aged children. While we did not witness those scenes on Scottish streets at that time, we are far from complacent in Scotland. And one reason for that is that Scottish teachers, 80% of whom are women, are regularly victims of violence and aggression, often misogynistic in nature by pupils in their schools. This is why we, in the EIS have our Stand Up for Quality Education campaign and why it's of such critical importance right now. Building on the recommendations within the report of the UN High Level Panel on the Teaching Profession, our campaign is of course about the need to support and protect teachers' health and safety. It is of course about meeting the needs of the children we teach, especially the needs of some boys who are enthralled to misogynistic and racist influencers online but it is also a campaign about protecting and strengthening the very fabric of our society. Proper investment in quality education is the best preventative spending to ensure social cohesion. Austerity, on the other hand, guarantees educational and societal stress and breakdown. It is the preeminent foreseeable health and safety risk and labor need to end it now. Years of cuts to education in Scotland have seen the stripping away of essential support structures for teachers and learners, as my colleague, uh, uh, sorry, who, who just didn't speak just now, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, we've had huge, immense uh, cuts to support services, ASN teachers, EAL teachers, child psychologists. The work of those support specialists did not vanish with their posts, but simply got dumped onto classroom teachers. Sacrificing 11 hours a week in unpaid overtime just to try to manage that additional workload while also suffering the effects of violence and aggression, teachers across Scotland are now at breaking point. Last year, a freedom of information request across all local authorities found that the number of days lost to school staff absence due to mental ill health had risen by 57% in four years. We need to recruit and train more health and safety reps in our establishments and to demand the proper use of risk assessments and we need more teachers in the system. But the cuts keep coming, comrades. Cities like Glasgow have cut 172 teacher posts already, a figure set to rise to 450 over the next two years, a literal decimation of the teacher workforce in Glasgow. That poses a serious threat to educational aims, but also to the health, safety, and well-being of everyone in the city's schools. Education provides a wonderful opportunity for young people to learn and to thrive, but this can only be achieved in an environment where students can feel safe and be safe, and where the health, safety and well-being of teachers and fellow members of school staff is protected as a priority. I move colleagues, please support this composite. 